Abraham Rodriguez, lived in Lewistown, Maine. His neighbors considered him to be pleasant and approachable. He enjoyed riding dirt bikes with his friends. Nobody in Lewistown would have ever considered that people might want to see him dead, a lot of people, in fact. Nor did they suspect that Abraham Rodriguez was not his real name, or that he was one of Harlem's most notorious crack cocaine dealers of the 1980s. His real name was Alpo Martinez, and he was in witness protection. While Martinez certainly earned himself some enemies as a drug kingpin, he gained even more when he started ratting out fellow dealers to the police. Unfortunately, it seemed that Martinez never truly escaped his past. So when news broke of his death in 2021, when he was killed in a shooting, many speculated that he had been murdered by a scorned rival. This is the double life of Alpo Martinez. Born on June 8, 1966, Alpo Martinez got involved in the New York drug scene early. He was just 13 when he started selling drugs in East Harlem. The business proved to be fruitful, and Martinez later earned a reputation as a bombastic figure with a pangshang for driving expensive cars and street bikes. Despite being young, Martinez also proved himself to be brutal and willing to kill his rivals. Usually, he hired hitmen to do the deed. But sometimes, Martinez would get his hands dirty too, like when he helped carry out the murder of his former partner and close friend Rich Porter in 1990, after he suspected that Porter had cut him out of important deals. Porter's killing marked the beginning of the end for Martinez. Less than a year later, he tried to expand his business to Washington, D.C., but he got arrested and soon found himself facing drug trafficking charges. It was then that Martinez was offered a deal, become a federal witness in exchange for a lessened sentence. Martinez took the deal and sold out friends and partners. He pleaded guilty to contracting seven murders, and his testimony effectively brought D.C.'s cocaine infrastructure to its knees. Of course, betrayal isn't taken lightly in the underground drug trade, and Martinez had a target on his back. So he was soon placed in the Federal Witness Protection Program and given a new name, Abraham Rodriguez. After Alpo Martinez was released from ADX Supermax Federal Prison in Florence, Colorado in 2015, he officially entered witness protection. He got a new ID card for his new name and was instructed to move to Lewistown, Maine, a small, low-key city. At first, it seemed like Martinez was turning his life around. He moved into a new apartment where he was well-liked by his neighbors, got a job at Walmart, and even played basketball with local teenagers. Just two years later, Martinez founded his own construction business. His crews, and other people he encountered in the area, never suspected that he had once been involved in countless violent drug deals. Unfortunately, Martinez had trouble fully leaving his old life behind. Shortly after getting out of prison, he reached out to an old friend, wanting to explain why he had turned informant back in the early 1990s. Martinez began coming back to Harlem, despite being warned about the dangers of going against his witness protection arrangement. But once Martinez arrived in New York, he seemed to be entirely unconcerned with laying low. At one point in 2019, he met up with director Troy Reed and showed him the street corner where he killed Rich Porter. On camera, he also talked about what committing the murder was like for him. By 2020, Martinez was coming to Harlem so often that he was barely ever in Lewistown. He seemed determined to fix his reputation in his old stomping grounds, but his status as the mayor of Harlem had long faded. Then, on October 31, 2021, Martinez was killed. When news broke that 55-year-old Alpo Martinez had been shot and killed in Harlem, most assumed that his killer was a vengeful rival or old enemy trying to get even. Martinez's past, it seemed, had come back to haunt him. As the New York Daily News reported, Martinez was killed because of his bad driving habits, not because he had ratted out a former business partner. At some point during the summer of 2021, Martinez had apparently struck a man named Shaquem Parker with his motorcycle. Martinez reportedly had a bad habit of driving too close to pedestrians, but the incident allegedly angered Parker so much that he held onto the grudge for months. Then, on Halloween around 3.20 a.m., Parker saw Martinez pass him by in a red Dodge Ram pickup truck. Seeing a moment of opportunity, Parker fired three shots into the truck's driver's side window, turned away, and then turned back and fired two additional shots. Martinez was ultimately hit in the arm and the chest, with one of the bullets hitting his heart, 
In his last moments, an NYPD source told New York Daily News, Martinez was seen tossing bags of heroin out of the window. When news reached Lewiston, most of Martinez's former neighbors had no clue what to think. All they could remember was that he had been a generally pleasant guy, friendly with the kids in his neighborhood. For close friends like Nick Papa Constantine, the news of Martinez's death also served as news about who he really was, and it brought complex feelings. I want to sit here and say I know that he was fully genuine all the time, Papa Constantine said. You take somebody you know unbelievably well, and then you read this thing and it doesn't connect. Those who knew him in Harlem, though, seemed less surprised. He died almost like a comic book villain, one former gangster said. Then, on February 28, 2022, 27-year-old Harlem resident Shaquem Parker was arrested by the NYPD in connection to the shooting, and later charged with weapons violations and Martinez's murder. Parker was being held at Rikers Island on an unrelated gun possession charge at the time of his arrest. According to investigators, he'd been caught on surveillance cameras arriving in Manhattan from the Bronx before meeting his brother at a deli near 7th Avenue. Parker is then alleged to have walked over to Martinez's vehicle and fired through the window before exiting via the Harlem River houses, and returning to the Bronx by cab. Cell phone data confirmed his whereabouts the night of Martinez's killing, 